Hey guys, welcome to another Reaper Blog tutorial. In this video, I'm going to have a look at the Yuhi Repro Synth. It is a free, what they call, researchware project. The purpose of releasing the synth was so that they could get uh, some feedback on the five different filter models that they're thinking of implementing into Repro 1 synthesizer, which is going to be an emulation of the Pro 1 synthesizer. And that synth, from one model to another, Everyone is different. They've been um, kept in different environments and there's different component tolerances and they all sound different. So these models for the filter, some are more accurate and some are lower CPU. Some are more musical sounding or there are various different changes uh, between the different models and they just want people to say what their favorite is. Personally, I think this synth sounds best with the cutoff low and not a lot of resonance, uh, except for some of the special effects things. And even then, I'm not really hearing a huge difference between the filter model where I even care. So that's just my opinion. I urge you to try this thing out because it's free and it might only be a limited time offer. So um, check out Yuhi's website for more details. So this synthesizer is dual oscillators with a noise generator, and it is monophonic, so it can only play one note at a time. If you tune the different oscillators to different notes, then you can get two notes, but uh, generally speaking, it can only play one note at a time. It can't play chords. Now there's nothing wrong with a monophonic synth. It is still very usable in a musical context for modern sounds and vintage sounds. It's really not a hindrance at all. One of the reasons I'm making this video is because I have 30 presets that I created that I want to share with you guys. So after the brief explanation of how to use this plugin, I'll quickly run through all of the 30 different presets and tell you how you can get them to use on your own. Okay, so going around the different sections of the interface, master volume, presets, saving, preset, undo and redo. Then there's a display for the different parameters as you change them. You also use the arrows on the sides to go to the previous or next preset. Oscillator A, frequency range of an octave, and then there's four octave settings. Saw wave and square wave, pulse width for the square wave shape. A sync option to sync the uh, oscillators between oscillator A and B. Oscillator B has the same options as oscillator A with the additional triangle wave and the triangle wave adds a lot of thickness to uh, bass sounds. The toggles for using this oscillator as the low frequency oscillator or normal oscillator to follow the keyboard or not. So after we choose an oscillator, there's the mixer section where we blend in our different sound sources. Oscillator A, oscillator B, and a noise. Okay, so let's hear how this sounds with the single saw wave oscillator. All right, so that's just a single saw wave on the lowest octave and frequency setting. I have this going into the hall room just to give it a little more life. Here's without. It just kind of livens things up, makes it stereo fairly subtly. All right, so that's a saw wave, different octave. We can shift click on this to move it in finer increments. Here's the square wave. Which sounds pretty fat on its own. So we'll take two different um, square wave oscillators. So those are unsynced, and now I'll sync it. So it just keeps them from drifting, which may or may not be what you want. Now that we have the sound, let's go to the filter section. For low notes like this, there's not a lot happening until you get to about 50% on the filter. and some resonance. 
the resonance automatically uh, attenuates the volume in this range, and then above that it gets screechy. The actual volume doesn't increase that much, but it puts it into a range that's that our ears are more sensitive to. Very piercing. Okay, so let's go through these five different filter models. And it's really in sounds like that where you hear the differences in the filter models and not really nice sounds. Okay, so that's the filter. And then we've got our ADSR envelope. So attack is the beginning fade in sort of sound, shaped like this on the sound. Oh, what we do need to do is um, set our mode to envelope and re-trigger. That makes our fade in. Short, instant attack, or very long. Decay is a time setting. So if we have our sustain and release down, we're hearing just this little click. So decay is the, um, the time between the attack starting and hitting the start of the sustain volume. Hope that makes sense. So sustain is the volume that's go that the synth is going to play at when you're holding down the key. And decay is the time it takes to get to the sustain level. It's slowly going down in volume and then it's going to sustain at that level. But we can do a high sustain level and a short decay. We can have the sustain level up at a very short amount and it will make a difference really. But if you want really short notes for arpeggios, this is these two controls are going to be very important. And then release is after you let go of the note. Okay, hope that makes sense. Over here we have glide amount, so crank this up. Play a low note and then a high note. So there's a time uh, it takes to get up there. Separate pitch bend amounts for up and down, which is not something you see on many synths. Usually it's just one setting. So it defaults to two, but it can go up to an octave. All right, and then modulation, let's see. Modulation uses oscillator B to control the filter cutoff. So let's try and go wave and set this to low frequency and keyboard off. So oscillator B we're not hearing at all. So oscillator B is just acting on this cutoff. And because we have keyboard control off, it's always going to be the same frequency. But we turn keyboard on.
that pulsing effect uh, changes depending on which key you hit. Same rate, and if we turn that on faster as we go higher, which can make for some really interesting effects. Then there's envelope amount, so that um, controls the amount of the filter that's being controlled by your attack, decay, sustain, and release settings. And the keyboard amount will kind of scale the cutoff and resonance amount so that you're getting a lower cutoff amount for low frequencies and a higher cutoff amount for high notes. Low notes versus high notes. All right, I'm going to turn that off, modulation off. All right, so keyboard amount is at full. So it's a very, very low cutoff amount. And if I play a high note, it's bright. If I turn this down, same filter setting for low and high notes. So I hope you guys understand kind of the basics of how to work through this plugin to create your own presets. I'm going to show you some of my presets now. So this is one I set up called Basic. It's a dual saw wave with a slight decay, and it's good for arpeggiated bass lines. So let's go to some of my example sounds here. So I've got one really low pattern, then I've got an arpeggio, and then I've got a higher arpeggio, just an octave up from that. All right, so it's just like a really sort of short bass. And it can make it more short and stabby by adjusting these. If it's too high, then you don't get those 16th notes. It's all just blending together. Let's go to the next preset, Boss Fight. I like this one, it's a square wave. Um, it kind of reminded me of like a, a video game, like a boss fight, I, I guess. <laughs> I don't know what to call it, really. So it works well with low frequencies. So oscillator B is tuned uh, seven semitones above oscillator A. So it's playing a chord for every key. Next one, buzzy bass. For 16th note synth wave stuff, it needs sidechain pumping. Play with decay between 40 and 70%. This really should have a pumping effect, so I'm going to put in a the air pumper effect and turn off MIDI input and quarter note. So a lot of the basses are kind of designed to be pumped like that, along with the kick drum. This is Master Baser. And it really sounds best in the low frequencies as a layer along with some other stuff. Rhymes with Rogue, kind of a Moog style bass. And this one sounds pretty good for low and high frequency stuff. So 
So that's another fun one. Uh, solid sub is just a really low frequency triangle wave. Another one that's just meant to be layered with some other stuff. Thick square bass. It, <laughs> I wrote, it's a bass. Oh, one thing I should mention is that this is not velocity sensitive. It's all the same velocity, same volume coming out of it. This is will bass for ARP. Short square wave bass used with an ARP. Going into lead stuff, oscillator A is a saw wave, oscillator B is a triangle and a square wave, four semitones up on oscillator B. This one kind of reminds me of video game stuff. Bright lead. Oh, that's a pretty standard sounding square wave lead for arpeggios. All right, so that's just a fifth interval. Here's a Hoover, which is not gonna work with this stuff, but a Hoover sound is a really cheesy dance music sort of bass sound. It sounds kind of cool on the low frequencies. I'm gonna go down another octave on my keyboard. It's a very thick sound, which is nice, but it's kind of most famous for the long gliding stuff. So uh, here's a D and up two octaves. Super cheesy. Yeah, I hope people don't use that sound. So imperfect fifth is a, a fifth interval with a slight detuning on this. So 7.10 above. It was just slightly off, and I think it makes it a lot more interesting just doing that. Mistuned is um, modulation from oscillator B causes various flutter effects on each key. Use it for sadness. <laughs> so this is a weird one. This is where the I'm using a lot of modulation on this from oscillator B, and it causes these pulses that don't really align the same way every time. So if I play a white key, It's got that pulsing, fluttering sound effect with it, but some of the black keys line up perfectly. That's a weird one and a little hard to explain because this synth does weird stuff. For example, if you have oscillator A and B down, but increase your uh, modulation amount, you'll still hear a note. I have the mixer all the way down and it's still making a note. And you don't really see that on other synths, as far as I know. Maybe I don't try to do that with other synths. All right, so this is octaves two. Simple sawtooth playing in different octaves. And this is the other octaves one. So 
So kind of a pretty standard sound. Nothing too special, but something that's useful. Kind of stabby, soft five. Again, some of these things are, are meant to be layered. Uh, here's a hi-hat. It was just the noise source. So not a lot you can do with that, but it's kind of neat that you can make a, a hi-hat sound from a synthesizer. Now we're getting into the special sound effect sort of sounds, which are less musical. I call this one alarm tone. Let's go up a couple octaves. So I suggested using this for alarm sounds or uh, user interface beeps. You will have to filter that because there's super low frequencies in there as well. Uh, let me put on the oscilloscope. This next one is called Alias. I love those weird kind of sounds. This one's called destroy them with lasers. You make zappy sounds with it. I love those sort of things. They're not particularly useful in music, but uh, they are useful at times. This one's called Droids, and it reminded me of the Star Wars droid uh, vocalizations. So I really like that one. Any sort of robot voice I think is pretty cool. Energy weapons is kind of like a laser kind of sound. Let's try this one without the keyboard option. I think something broke. So really weird sounding, maybe interesting for a background effect, pulsing bass. Sweep. This is basically just a sweeping um, sine wave. Yeah, 
And you can change the speed of it by altering um, oscillator B frequency. UFO sounds. So that one has a really long attack and release, so it kind of evolves for a long time. And this is with a cutoff frequency all the way down and lots of resonance. So really just kind of making the thing glitch out as the sound. And this is just like a wobble bass thing. And so you can use the octaves and frequency selection to change your uh, wobble sound. And zap. And that's just a layer that you can use along with an explosion and things like that for space sounds. And if you guys have been counting along, you probably realize that there's only 29 that I've shown you. And uh, I only realized this as I'm going through the editing and got through all the presets and realized that there was indeed only 29. So this is another sound effects style preset, and this is a noise sweep. Here it is on a fairly low note. So it's a slow build up, and then it has a sawtooth modulating, changing the cutoff frequency and the resonance. So here's a more middle range key. It pulses faster because it's following the keyboard, but the same intensity is there. Okay, so there's 30 presets for you guys. How do you install these presets? You'll go into the repro plugin, right click in the directory option, and then go to reveal in finder. And it's going to bring up the UHE folder. This is the easiest way to show you on Mac and PC where you go. So you get to the repro folder, you drop in my preset pack. So to get my 30 presets for repro, head over to reaperblog.net, enter your information on the subscribe page. You'll get these presets plus two hours of mixing tutorials and a lot of other stuff. And that's it for this video. Thanks a lot for watching. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already and visit reaperblog.net for a lot more.